Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you for this opportunity that you have given me to correct the anomalies in the body of Christ. Thank you because I believe this message will travel far. Help, O oh God, all the music, gospel music ministers to come across this message. Church choristers and those who said they are singing to bring glory to your name and to save souls. In Jesus' name I pray. The song of fools, don't be surprised. That is the message I'm preaching. The song of fools. We have the song of the wise. We have the song of fools. Do you know that foolish people often consider themselves as being wiser than others? And as a result of that, they behave stupidly many a times. But the wise keeps learning and listening to rebuke, correction, and constructive criticism. The world is in trouble today because foolish people are everywhere. It is my prayer that you and I will not be foolish in our attitude, in our wills, in our actions, and relationships. As a child of God, you must make God the number one priority in all you do without any form of rivalry, competition, or negotiation. If God is truly your God, it must be the Lord over all. I repeat, if God is truly your God, it must be the Lord over all. This message is coming to you at a time when all kinds of songs and, uh, you know, all kind of songs are currently trending within the Universal Church. Most choirs and ministrations these days are carnally motivated, so sensual, devilish, and coded with seducing, enticing, and deceiving undertone. You hear the choristers ministering, and the undertone is all about seduction. The undertone is all about carnality, sensuality, and depravity. Nothing spiritual, nothing divine in what they are singing. And people seem to understand what they are singing, and they just try to follow follow the trend, the dictate of their songs. It shouldn't be. As children of God, we must know left from our right. We must be bold enough to distinguish between what is wrong and what is right. We must be bold enough, you know, to take, you know, draws from our good, separating devilish messages, devilish songs, ministrations, and all that, and then bringing glory to God in our sense of judgment. Presently, as I've said, we have all kinds of songs that are currently trending within the body of Christ that are usually carnally motivated and sensual, so devilish and full of satanism. We have to correct all that. Such Satan's glorifying songs does not bring glory to God, and we must automatically condemn them. Otherwise, as we allow them to sing Satan's glorifying songs in our programs, in our you know, uh, uh, activities, what we are doing is to automatically re- in, reintroduce the church back to the world and spiritual slave trade. I, for one, I censor every song graced, dwelling praise and worship, as well as choir ministrations in the church I pastor. I don't condone nonsense. If you sing seductively or carnally, you will be publicly disgraced and excommunicated immediately. I, myself, I am a singer, and I know what it takes to worship God in spirit and in truth. Hear this now. The church choristers and many gospel music ministers, they are what they are because nobody is willing to correct, discipline, or trim their excesses. As they say, they minister. Therefore, they are at the liberty. They are always at the liberty to sing 
anything, dress anyhow, and introduce satanic dancing steps back to the church. Obviously, songs are meant to glorify God and also teach church worshipers the referential way to adore God in songs, to adore God in inspiration. If you look at the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 5, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse, verse 5, it says, It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. This is where I brought out the message. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of of fools. When you look at the world today, you see foolish people singing foolish songs. And uh, the so called town seekers love what they are singing. They call them to their meetings and parties to sing and glorify the devil. And every one of them seems to be looking for the worship of men and the praise of men. The praise and the worship, adoration that ought to be given to God. The song ministers these days have automatically taken it over to themselves. This is a spiritual aberration that needs urgent correction, or else the decadence in the church will be without measure. I censor every song raised in the church I pastor by the grace of God, either during the praise and worship section or the choir ministrations. Because if you sing rubbish, if you sing rubbish, I repeat, if you sing rubbish and dress shabbily or you dress seductively, I will publicly disgrace you. It's better for you to go to another church that will help you go to hell gloriously. In the church I pastor, you don't dress anyhow, you don't sing anyhow, you don't introduce the worldly dancing steps into the church I pastor. No, we have the Bible as the standard. We have the Bible as the yardstick. And by the grace of God, I'm not a novice when it comes to singing and praising the Lord. I sing like a lady by the grace of God. It is a gift from God that must be used to the glory and honor of his name. Solomon was saying where I read to you in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 division, division 5 that it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. If you don't acquit yourself to messages like this, how will you be able to distinguish between good songs and bad ones? And that leads me to dividing the message into two subheadings. One, Examples of foolish songs. Examples of foolish songs. Number two, examples of good songs. Examples of good songs. Let's go to point one. Examples of foolish songs. There are many, but I've decided to group them into five topically. One, Kana songs. Two, adulterous songs three seductive songs four sin suggesting sin promoting and sin establishing songs and five flesh gratifying songs when you sing songs that give your flesh a kind of gratification when the songs begin to gratify your flesh it's a foolish song before the lord and unfortunately, many people are into it. If worldly musician sings that way, I think it's okay for them. Worldly musicians, if they sing that way, it's okay for them. But how do we judge? How do we categorize? And where do we place the songs of the so-called gospel ministers these days who sing to glorify themselves and to make money? When you look at the way they twist themselves, skews their faces, wink their eyelashes, twist their hands, just singing and displaying carnality, charisma, forgetting that charisma without character will lead you nowhere. It is character one must work at, character in godliness, in holiness, uprightness, and pureness of heart. 
because outward our outward sacrifices and service bring no glory or joy to god without inward purity inward righteousness and faith that's what god is looking for these days we have so many noise right out there people are just singing noisy songs pure jargons songs with no meaning songs that cannot attract people's hearts to heaven songs that makes people to live as though there is no god they gratify their flesh they embellish their flesh and uh, they cuddle themselves in the songs they are singing god is correcting it listen to it again ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 5 it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools i'd like you to listen to this you must never listen to songs like this don't make the mistake of listening to songs like this kind of songs adulterous songs the sub the, the deceptive songs and seductive songs sin suggesting sin promoting sin establishing songs you don't listen to it the song that will give you fleshly gratification you don't listen to it don't make the mistake of listening to them because they are satanic and sensual they anger god and the composers the singers the promoters and the listeners to such songs will eventually cool their feet in the lake of fire so come out from among them and be you separate there is this particular song trending now in the body of christ that god i just want to paraphrase god does not uh, god is less concerned about my attitude position and relationship with people he keeps blessing me every day he does not ponder on the way i go neither does he consider the foolish things i do that's his foolish song from the lord don't don't sing that song again god god is greatly interested in how you live your life because if you live your life in sin don't ever say you are serving the lord if you live your life to please serve you are none of him because those who serve the lord will do so in spirit and in spirit and and in truth I beg your pardon if you snatch another man's wife you snatch another woman's husband and you are singing the song does god god is less concerned about how i live my life where i go what i eat what i smoke where i sleep and what comes out of my mouth god is less concerned he keeps blessing me every day he has completely categorized you with those who enjoys general blessings special blessings that are meant for special children who obeys him can never be your portion if you are the type once again listen to it corner songs adulterous songs the sort the, the, the sedic, se, se, seductive songs seductive i'm so i'm so so sad that's why i'm stammering that's why i'm stammering i tell you the truth looking at the church today no sanity in the church no sanity in the church all kinds of songs that the devil has given to the singers i wonder why people can no longer sing in the spirit and ensure the glory of god comes down each time they sing where are the real singers the people will not allow god to abandon his heritage where are they may god find you and me as one of them in Jesus' precious name. And that leads me to point number two, examples of good songs. Just as we have, you know, foolish songs, we have good songs. Good songs include God-glorifying songs, thanksgiving songs, praise and worship songs. The praise and worship songs you are rendering unto the Lord. Songs of encouragement, songs of admonition and consolation, sin-exposing songs sin overcoming songs you sing on how people can overcome sin you sing on how people will know that this is sinful in the sight of god sin condemning songs songs of repentance and adoration to god 
revival songs, spiritually awakening songs. You sing like these people are spiritually revived and people will know that they are backslidden and they have to urgently come back to the Savior and the Lord of their lives, the very bishop of their soul. Revival songs, spiritually awakening songs, songs that draw people's heart to heaven, songs about eternity, songs about the love of God, songs about the anger of God, songs about God's severity, songs about God's impartial judgment, life-building songs, songs about the rapture, moral inculcating songs. These are good songs that we have to be singing and encourage the choristers around us. And I want to talk to General Vasiers again in this uh, message begin to censor all kinds of songs they are bringing into your church don't just snub them don't just keep quiet bite and back this time around you even bite before you back so that they will know you are damn serious god place you over them as their spiritual watchmen hear the word at my mouth and give them warning when i say unto the wicked they shall surely die and the righteous is there and he refused to warn them surely the wicked will die in his wickedness in his sinfulness but his blood would i required at your hand as a preacher the general overseer general superintendent bishop apostle prophet teacher evangelist whatever is the spiritual accolade or appellation you have god has placed you over that particular assembly watch over their souls watch over their spirit watch over their lives correct them as at when due don't sleep over their spiritual malnourishment nourish them give them the balanced diet of the word of god and their lives will change for better we need correcting rebuking and chastising songs when last did you hear a song in the name of the lord that corrects you that chastises you that rebukes you and you see your spiritual nakedness and poverty and you know you are miles far away from the Lord. When last have you seen that, have you had a song like that that will make you go down on your knees and you break down in tears forgetting who you are and what to have and you just want to make right your ways before the Lord. You want to rectify your ways and right the wrongs you have done in the sight of the Lord. When last did you hear songs like that? We need songs you know, that, that builds life. We don't need, oh God, songs that destroy lives we don't need songs like that we need more inculcated songs songs about the anger of god songs about god's power god's you know you no know, strange works, God's deliverance and authority over demonic activities. We sing to expose the power of God unto people who care to listen. God is powerful over circumstances and situations, regardless of what the devil is painting in their hearts and their lives, on their ways, on their path. God is greater. We sing about how God divided the Red Sea, how God brought water from the rock, how God raised the Jairus' daughter. We sing about the healing of a man born blind from his mother's womb. We sing about the healing of you know a man that was born lame from his mother's womb, born blind from his mother's womb, vice versa. We sing about the power of God, about the greatness of God over circumstances and situations. And then we need songs from the Bible. You sit down and bring out your Bible, pray unto God. He gives you inspiration from the scriptures and then you begin to sing it. The Bible says in the book of Job, of Job that we must must worship the Lord who gives songs in the night. He gives songs in the night. So it is in the night we wait upon the Lord, not just in the night alone, any time of the day, but preferably in the night time when there is absolute serenity everywhere, quietness everywhere, and your spiritual antenna is hypersensitive hyper to receive from the Lord at that time. Bible believing bible exposing bible preaching songs that's what we need from people who will sing about the power of god the deliverance of god the authority of god we need songs uh, describing the glory of god the beauty of god the splendor of god my time is fast spent let's read from the scriptures then you understand exactly what i mean revelation chapter 4 in Revelation chapter 4, permit me to start the reading from verse uh, number 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and the rest 
they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. This song particularly number 11 that I've just read to you now, I've known that song for over 40, 40 years ago. And that song is evergreen because no song given by the Holy Ghost can be outdated at any time. It remains fresh, relevant, converting, convincing, and of course, embellishing. Therefore, we must learn songs like that and begin to sing them in our worship. We sing them in our services. Let's forget about useless songs that, that just <laughs> uh, come from the, from the hearts of those who are not born again, but they are just looking for money. Those who are making merchandise of the gospel, they look for songs that people would hear and buy it. Unbelievers can play it, sinners can play it, abolists can play it. No, I don't want to mention names here now. I know some gospel ministers. Yes, gospel ministers. The people who have taken to you know, gospel music ministrations. That you don't play their cassettes anyhow. Because if you play their cassettes, it will bring conviction upon you. It will cut off your excesses. You can't hear people playing their cassettes anyhow because those cassettes are from the womb of the Holy Spirit. I'm not through yet. Revelation chapter 5 from verse 8 to 14. Revelation chapter 5 from verse 8 to 14. Talking about good songs before the law. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and ten thousands of ten thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the, in the sea and all that are in them, how do I say blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that seated upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever? And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. It will surprise you that even Jesus in his lifetime sung a song. In Matthew chapter 26, the study, there we saw and read, you know, in the scripture that Jesus sung a song. I want to close. In the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries, believers of those times composed songs that are still relevant today. Songs like, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Songs like, There is a new name written down in glory. Yes, it's mine. It is mine. It is mine. Songs like, To God be the glory, great things he has done. Songs like, uh, Blessed Assurance, as I've said. And songs like, We worship the King, all glorious above. Songs like, uh, Take 
take the name of Jesus with you. The great physician is here. And then uh, songs like, uh, as I journey towards heaven. Songs like, uh, none like the name, no sweetest name like Jesus. Many, many songs. Many, many songs composed over 400, 500 years ago. And they are still relevant today because those songs came from the womb of the Holy Spirit. It is high time we go back to the spiritual drawing board, asking and begging the Lord to help us compose songs that will bow the knees of the worst sinners of our time at the altar of salvation. No matter how much we try to copy the word as we sing and dance like the people of the world that can never save them we will only make them you know successful religionists and they will never become spiritual they will never be able to establish a good enduring and intimate relationship with their maker i have spoken the mind of god in this message accept it and change because the time is short you will give account of your gift of your resources of your life unto god on the final day do not join those who are singing foolish songs don't buy them with your money don't listen to them don't make allusion to them condemn those songs castigate those songs kill those songs and discourage everyone around you from listening to songs like that teach them instruct them and show them how to listen to good songs once again god glorifying songs listen to them songs of thanksgiving praise and worship songs unto god songs of encouragement songs of admonition and consolation sin exposing songs sin overcoming songs sin condemning songs and songs of repentance and adoration to god revival songs spiritual reawakening songs begin to listen to songs like that songs that will draw the heart of people to god songs that will make people to break down in tears and repent of their sins and spiritual foolishness in the sight of God. Songs about eternity, songs about the love, the anger and severity of God. Songs about God's impartial judgment. Sing about the rapture, life-building songs, moral inculcating songs, correcting, rebuking, and chastising songs. And you don't get tired of singing them. Sing them aloud. Don't sing them just in secret alone. Sing them in the open. Sing them as special numbers. Sing them as you drive your car. Sing them in the office. Sing them in the yard where you are living. Sing them at night when you are doing VG. Sing them every now and then. Let people see Jesus in you. Songs about God's power, God's deliverance, and authority over circumstances, situations, people, powers, dominions, and their tongues in life. Songs describing God's glory, God's building, God's beauty, and God's splendor. Please sing of songs like this. The time is short. Jesus is coming. Wait for him. Don't let him come meeting you singing songs that are foolish, songs that are glorifying the devil. Begin to sing to the glory of God. God bless you.